Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Talking Tuesdays. My name is Tanvi Sharma, and uh, our topic for today is exploring with hands. As you can see, I succumbed to the to the pressure of looking at the screen, and I had to get these. So yes, uh, well, can't do much about it. I think right now. So welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to add Divya if she's here. Uh, in the meanwhile, how about we introduce each other? I can see Ipshita is here. Hi, Ipshita. Dr. Ipshita is here. Hi, uh, Purni. Welcome. Hi, Anshika. So as you know that um, these are the topics that we're covering is in actually a, a series that we're covering called Know Your Baby. And the second last uh, topic for our Know Your Baby and uh, we are going to cover it today. Uh, the topic is exploring with hands. Hi Divya. Hi. Is it just me but I think uh, Instagram has changed their interface a little bit, isn't it? I think so too. Yeah. So yes, welcome everyone. Yes, Anshika say, agrees too. So before we start, um, we, uh, we were just, uh, I was just telling everyone about the topic, exploring with hands. I came across this uh, really cute and interesting picture, which uh, let me just see if I can, you know, turn around my screen and show, wherein there was this baby who was trying to grab the mask out of the doctor's face. <laughs> So that's indeed exploring with hands as soon as you come to the world. Yeah, that is so, it. Yes. I too have a picture. I think I should turn around and show it as well. It's a picture I want to begin with. Sure. Okay, let's see if I can manage that. Uh, so this picture is actually um, where I want to start with. This is, um, maybe I'll just give you the link to it because you can see it. So in September 2000, there was a feature in USA Today and it said the hand of hope. And it showed the hand of a 21 week baby uh, where the, the uh, surgeon was doing an in utero surgery. Divya, you are. That'll be better because I just checked my internet connection is fine. Please bear with us. Divya is just going to uh, log in again. She was having some issues with her internet. Yeah, indeed, the interface is quite cool. Very uh, slick and neat and very cool.
All right, let me just check if she's here. Sorry about this. Hi, Adi Sindhur. Just bear with us. Uh, Divya is just going to join us. Having some issues with the internet. Isn't it quite standard these days? Having issues with internet. I think nobody minds it any longer. All right, here she is. Just adding her. Okay, now let's see. I'm still having trouble, I think. Yes. Maybe I should go out in the garden and do this today. Okay, that'd be great. Um, just bear with me while I move out. Sure. Um, okay, let's see. Seems like um, maybe a 4G connection might be more helpful. Hi, everyone. They are just going to join us in two minutes. So uh, please bear with us. Sorry about this delay. Can't really do much about it. I think I'll still have the same problems that I had there. Maybe a little bit better. It is definitely better. Okay, then. This is my garden. So we can enjoy the green plants a little bit. Really That's my view. Lovely. So I want to start so, again. Um, we're getting some love. And we are love it when we get love. I know. Uh, Purni, thank you so much, uh, you know, for... Uh, sharing your feedback about the book review. So thank you so much. Okay. So I want to start with saying that there was a, a feature in USA Today in September 2000, and it was called The Hand of Hope. And it was taken by a photographer called Michael Sansi. And Michael Sansi was invited to photograph this in utero uh, surgery where the surgeon was doing a surgery on the fetus in the uterus at 21 weeks of gestation. And uh, there's an interesting um, description that he says that he found that the womb was moving and the, the photographer is saying, and then he said that, and nobody was moving it, so it was from inside and then a hand shot out and then it retracted back and the baby grasped the surgeon's hand. So oh. the surgeon, the surgeon tried to shake it off just to see the strength and it wouldn't leave him. And that's when he took that picture and it's called the hand, uh, the hand of hope. And you can see it on the photographer's website, uh, michaelclancy.com. So I wanted to start with that because uh, when we talk about baby's reflexes, we, when we say the word reflex, we dismiss it. We dismiss it in terms of saying, oh, this is something that's happening involuntary and it has no purpose. But that is never true. If we look at nature, nothing is nature is purposeless. And, uh, you know, I want to remind everybody of how we talked about the brain organizing, how the body started to work. Um, are you pulling out the photograph? Yes, I am. It's a wonderful photograph to see. And so basically we want to say that when parents know about their children's reflexes, but not just, oh, you know, the baby moves involuntarily, but 
there is a purpose to that movement that we can encourage that we can facilitate that we can even enjoy that and one of the most common examples that i want to bring up today is that i see a lot of babies with mittens on their hand that's right and that taking away a lot of what those hands were supposed to do uh you know when when we started so uh this movement of the hand the grasping starts at 14 to 16 weeks of gestation and then the baby is seen in many ultrasounds grasping the um umbilical cord and when we were discussing it in a class once uh somebody said that they are kind of ringing on the bell saying send me this send me this <laughs> like a call bell to the mother but jokes apart grasping uh is is an instinct that develops as early as 14 to 16 weeks and we wonder why but if we look at our ancestors or our, our you know the species that we've evolved like some with comfort so if you find that your baby is fussy try putting your hand in their palm and letting them grasp when they hold on to something it makes them less fussy so there is a reflex for sure but re- think of reflex is not as something that involuntary the baby's body does but think of it as nature's fail safe designs so that progress can happen because if we left everything to be done then only every person who knew everything would do everything but reflex is our nature's mechanism that no matter what the baby will do these things and therefore lead to development and so we want to move from grasping which is involuntary to swiping uh, and many of us didn't know that babies have a very strong reaching out uh, reflex even when they are born so you'll find a newborn baby as you hold as a mother talk will reach out to the mother now why would that be there why would the clinging reflex be there and if we were to just let ourselves enjoy that what would it mean for a mother who speaks to the baby and the baby reaches out to her that means that there is a tug at our heart there are mechanisms that are now involving bonding and that makes sure that this baby is being looked after thereafter what does it feel for the baby to clutch on to the mother's clothes or cling on to the clothes what does it tell us what nature had designed it for that babies and mothers were supposed to be together and in doing that we would then enhance development it goes from reaching out then it's lost these skills are lost in about 2 months so you know babies are born with their fists really closed and then by 2 months they are open and and they don't have much strength the way i want to compare strength is that in a newborn if you give your fingers in their hands and you pull they can lift themselves up that is the strength of their grasp they can lift their body weight with that uh, grasp but at two months they can't seem to hold anything and you know a lot of people think that oh maybe there's a uh, you know they've lost that reflex or they've lost strength in the body but basically we talked about it last time that the brain organizes and disorganizes so it's literally it's already wired for reflexes and then it unwires and then to wire back for voluntary and then the baby will start reach, swiping reaching out holding with the whole palm and the and the thumb, thumb will somehow get into action and then of course with the finger and the thumb which is we call fine motor skill so our hands uh right from the beginning are working towards exploring the world while developing themselves to have that beautiful handwriting or hand uh, you know eating eating uh, so many different things tuning the radio working on the phone so many different things that come from our hand it's a developmental sequence but the the way humans develop or anybody develops even any living thing develops is it's a lived experience if the hands are not experiencing they're not living they don't know what they are taking in so they are adapting to whatever they are meeting and so those mittens while we are thinking about the nails and the scratching and grabbing the mother's hair are actually valuable that exploration of 
there, you know, everything that is happening. So grasping will turn into other things if the hands are allowed to work. And with this, I wanted to bring out two things, you know, in the womb, the nails are already there, but because they're soaked in water, they're not sharp. So the baby is swiping his face and touching everything, but nothing is getting cracked, scratched. When we come into air, they become a little harder. So when the baby is in deep sleep, that's when you can clip the nail. But allowing the baby to claw with his hands, both the mother's face or surfaces or his own face actually helps developing hand-eye coordination because they're going to be fascinated with that. You'll see them looking at their hands and as they bring it to their mouth, and we talked about it in the oral pathway, to suck and soothe, this movement will get refined by practice over and over and over again. So, you know, what we're doing is we're actually taking that hand out of their mouth, taking away their soothing ability, topping them from this movement, frustrating them because they can't reach what they have known to be soothing, and stopping their movement and their hand-eye coordination. Also, when babies are this thing, they can't move their hands midline when they're below four months. So when we put toys which are midline and they reach out to it, it's very frustrating. If we put them on the side, they can actually reach out to them. So we want to play and engage with them using their hands and abilities so that they are, uh, you know, encouraged to practice. Second thing I do want to say here is that how nature has coded the brain is that you'll find that a baby will keep on reaching out for something and will not grasp but they will never get frustrated. They might actually look towards their care providers to see what is coming back. So two things or three things can happen that you can smile at them and encourage them and laugh and make it into a social interaction, which will then propel them to keep doing it again. And on their own, they don't give up because that's what their brain knows, that if I practice, I will develop muscle, I will develop nerve, I will develop skill. So they don't give up. But if, say, the care provider looks frustrated or says, oh, my God, you can't reach it, that's when they're taking the social cue of their hard work. So it's an interesting phenomenon because we're not just saying, oh, I'm reaching out and I'm learning to hold. But how is my effort being viewed? Is it being encouraged? Is it being frost? So, so you'll find that when parents, when parents give that cue, babies will start crying. Or the third thing that may happen is that we might feel that they are struggling and make it easy for them, in which case their practice session is over. So we can bring in social engagement with hands for an exploration of the world, including cueing from the parent or whoever is playing with the baby we can know their development stage and say, where should they reach out with their hand so that, you know, there is a, uh, there's a good chance of success, even when they touch it. Say it's a mobile and they touch it and it starts to move or it starts to make a sound, that again engages them. There's a lot of focus and hard work that they're doing constantly when they are playing. And that's why learning happens with playing. And um, also, also then, you know, giving them the practice that allows them to develop great motor skills, especially fine motor skills later in life. And uh, Montessori takes a lot of interest in using their hands. Uh, and when we heard Baldrop school, they said they said hand, heart, and head in that direction. So, uh, using the hand, exploring the, with the hands, and Doing things with the hands is a natural imperative which starts with a reflex and it exchanges ability depending on how other reflexes work, which means the reflex to keep doing also is inborn. And that's the physicality of it. And um, one of the things that's very interesting in this pathway is to say that because the baby is taking cues from the parent, being in proximity of the parent and having hands open gives them a lot of ability or like a in utero state. So baby wearing, therefore, is one of the tools of the, uh, uh, for the dexterous baby to use their hands.
and you'll find that when they start they're trying to grasp with this hand so this hand also moves with it and then gradually they learn to use only one hand and then refine it to fingers and then opposable thumb and so many different things it's miraculous how they do it by themselves with no help from anybody at all but let's not hinder it so two things that can help is to let their hands flow without mittens which i really find uh, very disheartening because if i were a person whose hands were locked away i wouldn't be very happy and especially because i if they don't have language this is another way of learning and secondly baby wearing would ensure that parents are uh, you know regulating the baby so learning experiences increases and they get curious because they feel safe they reach out because the mother's face is in proc- or the care provider the father or the grandmother whoever is wearing the baby is close by uh, so there is a lot more energetically and otherwise resource for development uh, especially with our hands than uh, when they were just lying in a crib and many other things were not happening for them so these are the two things the third thing i want to bring your attention is that if you look at embryology and we've done those eight weeks hands buds come out first and then legs and when the baby is developing we see the same thing in movement that hands start to develop and learn first before they can crawl or stand or walk or anything with the feet so nature has sorry about that nature has great symmetry nature has a great design it is so self sustaining so if we can truly enjoy looking at this and stop hearing the narrative of the baby being um undercooked or uncooked or unfinished we find that everything they are doing today is actually uh, a foundation for where they have to go and it's auto run and all parents can do is enjoy it first and foremost and secondly um, you know encourage and so that was our uh, with the hands one more thing that our finger pads have the maximum sensation receptors than any other part of our body so there's a lot of learning or knowing the word that we do with that so isn't it uh, really true uh, you know you said uh, that they reach out to the world and they seek that comfort and uh, isn't it true even for adults you know we first give our hands to to other person uh, you know whether it's friendship or or otherwise so you also uh, ask you know, for somebody's hand in marriage in marriage <laughs> <laughs> interesting that's true actually so even for adults i think it's it's so true and i, I see my uh, toddler uh who's 3 and 1/2 years old so if he's if he's scared he wants to you know just clench on to my finger like really tight so i'll know that you know he's he's uh, wanting that uh, you know comfort um so i think yes uh, even as as they grow uh that uh need for uh you know a, a touch or uh you know that that thing that they want to explore with hands so i think it's even true for us Yes, and we have a whole modality of healing around the touch or listening. So the uh, so the founder of or the person who started with this idea of cranial psychotherapy, Dr. Sutherland, has a book that says, "Thinking, feeling, hand." No, seeing, thinking, seeing, hand, fingers. You can actually think. Your fingers think and see when we are in um, in a session. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. what one thing or, or i i hope you will appreciate is that none of these pathways stand alone they're not you know hands are just hands hands in the mouth would mean something else true hands in touch tactile which is sensory or uh, this thing or in relationship touching the mother's face would mean something else here's an interesting one uh, babies move their hand and feet in the rhythm of their mother's voice it's called entrainment so the tone with which the mother's voice moves is how their mo- movements are so there's so much of the development of the limbs uh which is such a uh, intrinsic part of our mobility of our, our action oriented life that is dependent on so many other things but uh, you know how would you how would you place your hands if you were upset or for angry or afraid there won't be so pressure in it it will be more regulating mechanism 
actually encourage these learning pathways and that is why i thought one of the skills that parents can have or tools they can have is to be aware great so that was an interesting topic uh, and uh, so thank you everyone for joining us uh, you know there was a, a bit of a delay uh, today in starting but i think it's absolutely fine these days nobody bothers uh, about i think it's the most common thing <laughs> uh having internet what issues what i really love to hear if you can leave in comments if you're watching it now or later in the future is to what um, comes up for you or where where did you instinctively go when you heard this conversation about babies whether you had a small baby whether they were in mittens whether they did clutch to you or your own experiences with your hand i think it would be wonderful to hear back uh you know how uh, you brought up that idea about how the toddler holds your hand and then i thought that you can ask for somebody's hand in that way and in fact i wanted to the, it's across the board it's across cultures yeah. in india and it's, abroad it's you always culture. ask for the hand in ask hand. for hand in fact for me you know while, while we were you were talking about uh, this uh, you know it uh, took me back to the time when my kids were like baby and i have a second one who is actually a baby right now he's just 15 months old but i could just imagine that you know how he used to grasp for my face how he used to touch it and how then, they hold you know, the breast while how, feeding yeah exactly and uh, how rhythmically like you said uh, you know they they move their uh, limbs and how rhythm like with my talking to them they used to like and i always used to tell my husband that let's just see how rhythmic it is you know i'm talking and he's just doing this and then I, when it's- i stop he's stopping so yeah. it was- it's all, it's called the building block of conversation social conversation later it's called entrainment so they're yeah. entraining with the rhythm of your voice and this is how we actually make conversation later in life so yeah very interesting, interesting. what we have to do 20 years hence or 30 30 years hence we are preparing for it right now which point oh there yeah i i so wish i knew all of this uh when you know, i was <laughs> when i was just pregnant or uh, you know planning i would have uh, loved to know all of this then uh, but you know but you know what i think that most women would enjoy their babies if we would stop the chatter of what the do's and don'ts list that we have now got for parenting again this is you know um i think that there is a certain level of difficulty you know how you play those games and there are levels of difficulty Yeah. we have somehow said that there's a level of difficulty in parenting that you have to yeah. know so much more actually you don't and now we are talking about yet another level of difficulty which is reorienting to what it always was so how about True. we just remove these two layers and just tell women to enjoy their babies and observe observe their babies one of the best advice i got was that don't i was reading dr spock's book and my grand my husband's grandmom said uh don't read the book he doesn't know who your baby is read the baby and was the simplest way of parenting is just read the baby and be in awe I mean, if we just understand how nature is layered and how beautifully uh we come into our own selves at every stage of our life even at 50 i think uh it's organic um so if we can really begin to appreciate those early layerings what fun it would be great absolutely so true So um thank you and like Divya said it will be wonderful if you can leave us uh, a few comments uh you know if you're watching it now or later uh that'll be really nice and yeah, give, uh, give us a give us a hand in understanding what <laughs> hands can do <laughs> If also you have videos of your babies holding whether they are in this stage of holding whether they are in this stage of holding whether they can do this they can do this if you can send us tiny videos we'd love to put them and say well we are exploring the world with us absolutely so uh thank you so much for uh the, listening to us uh, you know in this talking tuesday and uh, we'll be back next week uh again with our last Another topic time. for yes is it last no friend. no we have a strong baby and then we, we have, have a strong baby, baby. Have cry baby, baby which is for and, the last and then we will keep one section for premature babies just to kind okay. of bridge that full term babies we've discussed but what happens when they decide to come early 
that would be a very more interesting topic divya <laughs> that would be a large topic so i'm just going to kind of uh i'm going to just open it up for you to think about because see when premature babies come people are worried about her so we also want to reorient parents to the parenting job not just be unavailable because you're so worried that kind okay. of bridging we will do oh hello didi <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, i think for premies uh, okay we'll have a offline we'll chat. have a whole maybe session. we should yes maybe we we should uh, you know ask for uh, any questions if people yes. have if we want to address it then as well yeah. and so if we be, uh, can address it we will yes that'll be great okay thank you everyone and uh, we'll be back next tuesday thank you so much and divya i have the same lights same lights Ah the stars yes you, <laughs> yes you do yes you do <laughs> okay thank you everyone bye bye